What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Above and Below, a Salt Life podcast. I am your host, Kieran Anderson, and we have Cameron Kirkconnell back on with us. What's up, Cam? How are you? Good, buddy. Good to see you. Thanks for having me on. Good to see you, too, man. What have you been up to? Man, I've been flat out with trips. All the... um you know, all the holidays keep us super busy. So, you know, I guide around the world for spearfishing and fishing, and we've been Central America, Bahamas, back and forth. It, it's been pretty epic, man. We've had a lot of big tunas. Lobster season just ended. We've got a lot of like eight to 10 pound lobsters at the end of season, which was amazing. And a lot of, a lot of stoked people. So it's been fun. For you guys listening in, Cam is like the gnarliest spearfisher, fisher dude in the world, in my opinion. It's funny because I talk to people about fishing and diving and stuff, Cam, and I'm literally like, dude, I know this guy that is so gnarly. Like, I always, like, bring you up or, like, Ryder because I'm, like, so stoked to be, like, a part of the Salt Life fam with you guys, you know, and, like, just butt your guys' heads and, like, talk to you about spear guns and stuff. It's just, it's funny, and it's rad to, like, get you back on here and, and talk to you and stuff. So, it's always a pleasure having you on. I'm stoked to, stoked to get you back on. Um, So... I want to talk to you about the solar kind of thing going on right now in the Bahamas, right? So um, you said you have a buddy that has a place out there that's just out in the boonies and we're trying to raise money um, to get solar panels installed, right? That's it. So in doing what I do, you know, in spearfishing and fishing and, and surfing as well, like we're always trying to go where nobody else can go, you know, to kind of go to the end of the earth and then try to go further. Um, <clears throat> and in doing that, you know, and going all these wild places around the world, we find some pretty cool, like niche little spots. And there's one in the Bahamas that's in the Barry Islands, um, which is only like 25 miles from Nassau, the most populated place that has an island that has one guy that lives on it. And that guy to sustain himself has a little restaurant called Flo's Conk Shack. And Later on, we'll talk about the uh, the GoFundMe, but it's Flo's Kunk Shack Solar. So Chester Darville is the guy's name. His family has been associated with this small island called um, Little Harbor K for hundreds of years. Like the story goes back to the original um, Bahamian lady that bought the, the island out from under the pirates. And the way she had get, made money was feeding the pirates. And the pi- she had heard that the pirates wanted to buy this island. So while the pirates were out doing their thing, she went to Nassau and bought the island out from under them. So they were kind of pissed. It's, it's a wild story. So <clears throat> however many hundreds of years ago that was, it's gone down through the, through the years. And now Chester is the only guy left on this island. And as you come into this like beautiful, you know, shallow water bay um, between the two islands where his is, it's about one to three feet deep for like hundreds of yards, crystal clear, like the most beautiful, you know, Bahamian sand you've ever seen. And there's dozens of turtles, like all those little turtles, like this big to, you know, 50 pounds. They yeah. want to be in there because the big sharks don't come in there as much and it gives them a little bit of a chance to escape. So it's like every time we get in there, like everybody's standing on the bow and like sees beautiful turtles. And then you see that this big pink, um house or I shouldn't even say big it's probably I don't know a thousand square foot yeah and on the on his roof it says you welcome <laughs> no way um, and uh so Chester has literally lifetimes of conch shells piled up on on the beach and I, I, we can put videos and stuff up on this so people can see it but I mean it's literally millions like it's, it's hard to explain. It just looks over like over the years, like just getting over the years, like no BS, like 10 foot tall, 15 feet deep for hundreds of yards. Wow. Like, I don't That's even know how sick. to calculate how many are there. So you can tell they've been doing it a while. Yeah. Yeah. So at this restaurant, which you can't just rock up and say, Hey, I'm here to eat. You got to call like a day or so ahead. Um, ideally more. <laughs> and let him know you're coming and he makes the most incredible crack conch which is fried conch fried fish um he does lobster rice and peas which is like rice and beans um and like one of the most phenomenal meals in like such a remote crazy place that you'll ever have in your life it's just like one of the most pure 
you know, remote, actually really, really good spots in the world. So it's not cheap to live remotely, um, yeah. especially to maintain anything. And Cause you were, you were <laughs> saying that he's running off a generator right now too, right? He's running off a generator. And for anybody on the East coast, they know about hurricane Dorian. When Dorian came through, it went a little bit North of him and timing wise, it wasn't great that his generator that he's been, you know, surviving on for however many years died. First off, having a generator, not having normal power, you got to fill that generator. Yeah. So there's no fuel place within 15 miles of where he lives. So is that by boat or by land? By boat. So he's got to go Jeez. by boat. Then he's got to get on land. He's got to take all his fuel cans or whatever. He's got to have the weather to be able to do it first off. Yeah. So he's got to go, you know, 15 miles to get all this stuff. Then he's got to bring it back and then he's got to hike it up this hill. And the hill is like this, yeah, this stone hill. And then every couple of days, you know, refill it. So just surviving there is a pain. It's very, very difficult. And after that storm, he lost his generator. And it was during the, I think it was just before COVID, I guess. But we didn't really have a, an option for a generator but we had heard that there was a generator kind of left in the bush um, on another island about five miles away. So him and two other guys went and they cut this thing literally out of the bushes where it had been sitting for like 15 years, put it on a boat and we drug that thing back to the island and we drug it up the hill. And somehow they got this thing running. And this is what he's been running on for the last, I mean, it's been like two years now. So, <clears throat> After the blood, sweat, and tears to get this thing up there, I was like, Chester, we, we got to do something about this. He can't do it physically. He's getting older. He's in his probably mid-50s or so. Um, and it's just challenging. Even if it was you and I who were in really good shape, it, it's a pain in the butt. So <clears throat> keeping with, you know, preserving such an epic, you know, environment place, uh, we looked into solar. And... I've put together a solar package. I had some guys come out and quote it and we've specced everything out. And originally our quote was for like 57 or 58,000, I think, since the prices have gone up in the time that we're running stuff or um, trying to, to raise money. And we're up to the total cost of everything is about 73,000. And I can put up here the specs on every, everything so people can see it. And it's on the GoFundMe as well, because obviously, I want to be 100% transparent about everything we're doing for this guy. We are trying to preserve one of the last true remote epic places, and it really is a worthy cause. Um, even if even if people never get to go there, like the thought and the the dream of being able to go to a place like this, yeah, it, it, it is worth it. Because there's, I mean, you've traveled a lot. There's not a lot of places like that yeah. left. Yeah. Um, you want to, you want to keep those around for sure. Yeah. So it's been cool. It's been, it's been very challenging. Like <laughs> I don't get anything out of this except a lot of stress and, and, uh, you know, trying to organize this, but <clears throat> it's been great. I think we've had 500 something people donate. Um, we're up to $57,000. So we're about, you know, 20 short of where we need to be. Um, and <clears throat> man, even if people can give 10 bucks, it's very, very appreciated. Um, and when the time comes, um, I'd love to have people, you know, come and help us so we can help with the install. Um, but it's a pretty, pretty radical place. Um, you know, people should definitely look it up. And, you know, if they have any questions on it, they can hit me up on Instagram. Mine is Cameron Kirkconnell <laughs> <laughs> or Cam Kirkconnell, I think is my Instagram. You obviously have like a special heart for that place. Do you have like a super like unique relationship with Chester himself then? I do, you know, live in that remote. Um, my family's from the Cayman Islands. So we grew up, you know, traveling back and forth to the Caymans. And anytime you go to the islands, like you always ask the people, your friends and your family, like, what do you need? You know, cause it's very hard to get stuff like something simple as peanut butter or honey or a spark plug or whatever goes a long way if you can't buy it in your local store. And there is no local store there. So I've always kind of had that island, you know, sentiment with Chester. And uh, you've spent time with me. Like, you know, my sense of humor. Like, I think he appreciates my really dry sense of humor because that's kind of how Bahamians are as well. But um, 
Yeah, it's been good. And we, you know, anytime I'm anywhere close, we try to bring people to, you know, to go and eat there and experience it. And, you know, I'm trying to, to put people on world record fish and really cool stuff. And nine times out of 10, they're like, that was my favorite part of the trip was watching the sunset, having the strongest rum punch of my life, you know, at Chester's and, you know, seeing the peacocks and the chickens and just what he's able to do with so little and have such an epic meal. And we, we dive around there as well. And there's, you know, the fish that we're eating is the same stuff we're, we're catching right around there. So it's been pretty cool, man. It's been probably more than a decade since I've been going there. And, um, you know, I, I just want to keep it going. Like I, I wish I could say all the people that I've, I've brought there, but when you go, everybody's written their names, you know, all over inside of there. And there's so many famous people that have been in there that it, it's, it's really cool. You know, like when people go in there, like, Holy cow, I'm going to write my name right next to Shakira <laughs> you yeah. know, or something like that. That's so, so sick. It's pretty wild. It's a cool, cool spot. So is that place like a huge destination then to go to for around there? Or is it kind of just one of those hidden gems? It's a hidden gem, you know, which is, it's hard to, hard to believe that those are still out there, but yeah. he, he doesn't do any social media. You know, um, he gets a fair amount of sailboaters and stuff. Um, yeah. and any of the yachts that come through there, they try to come in and, and eat with them. Um, so it's really cool. Like, in the times that I've been there, you just never know, you know, who's going to, who's going to walk in. Um, yeah. you know, like I, I've had some really, really unique experiences with, with clients and people that have showed up there that, you know, I can't even talk about on here. You know, <laughs> it's been like just lifetime experiences. So it's pretty rad. So he's running specifically off a generator right now still. Yeah. So, yep. so like, like you were saying, if he runs out of fuel and all goes bad. His boat doesn't work, whatever. Like he's done. He's done. And it, even when it, I mean, anybody that's ever had a generator, like those things are not consistent. And no. this one, kid you not, had been sitting in the bush for like 10 or 15 years, not being used, like cut out of the jungle and they got this thing running. So Dude. it's unbelievable that it's working at all. And I feel like for the people that are out there like obviously like running a generator at all times is loud it's obnoxious like it can be depending on what you have nowadays they're like tesla motors inside of those things it's crazy but um but like with solar panels like you're just using the power of the sun like that's so sick and you get all the batteries and you get whatever you need and it can hold power for so long nowadays it's insane yeah it's a phenomenal setup that we've got set up for him and we're trying to you know stay within budget and you know we've been lucky enough to have a couple of different donations one of which is the actual batteries they gave us a break on um the name of the company is dakota lithium and basically i told them because they wanted they want to do a sponsorship with me i was like any money that you would offer me put it towards these batteries because this is a worthy cause like i'm happy to represent you guys and do whatever you guys need but this guy really needs this. He needs this to survive. He needs this to, you know, provide for his way of life. And it's going to be gone if he doesn't get this. So the sooner we get this, the better, because if not, he's, it's just going to wear him down, you know, getting older, it's, it's, it's not going to be sustainable. So my belief and everyone's belief is that by doing this solar, he's going to be able to, you know, stay there the rest of his life, which is where he wants to be. Yeah. Is, is his place, is it specifically for food or can you stay there too? He's got, he built two little houses that do not have power. We're not kind of including them in this. Um, but I mean, if you want to stay, you can rough it. Yeah. <laughs> like it'd be full, like, you know, remote Indo surf trip kind of place. What, what kind of fish are they catching around there? Right now it's uh, dolphin which is Dorado, Mahi, or whatever, um, Marlin. There's still a couple um, Wahoo round tunas, and all the reef fishing is epic. Um, grouper, snapper, hogfish, uh, and, of course, you know, lobsters and conks. And that place, like, because you're saying that it's a hidden gem, there's probably not a lot of people that go around there to go fishing, right? Is that There's not. Is that <clears throat> area, you were talking about all the turtles and stuff, is that area, like, preserved, or is it just, like, he takes such <clears throat> good care of that area and makes sure that, he allows people to come in and out like that people aren't, you know, ruining the environment and stuff. 
No, I mean, everybody that comes there is pretty cognizant of it. Um, yeah. It's not a preserve. There is a preserve south of there, which I think helps, you know, kind of like feed that whole area. But yeah. it's just a natural spot that attracts the young stuff, which the key to any good fishery is having a nursery and having that shallow area provides for that. You know, the um, my son will my son and daughter will fish off the dock and they'll catch like all kinds of stuff. And if it's all That's catch it. and release. Like I think Connor's the only one that Chester allows to actually fish there. But the <laughs> rule is he's got he's got to let everything go. So he'll be down there. He'll catch twenty or thirty fish in the time that we're having dinner. It's pretty wild. How is how has this impacted like his survivability? Like having just generators versus what maybe the future can hold with solar panels and stuff. I feel like with generators, like when those things go out. If if you if you have a, a hurricane that rolls through, and you only have a generator and that thing goes out, like you're you're kind of screwed. Totally screwed. And think of it this way: like if you had, say, your car holds twenty gallons of gas. Yeah. If you didn't have the ability to go to a gas station, you would think of it. This is an easy way to do it. So you've got your car and you've got your boat. <clears throat> you need to get in your boat and drive fifteen miles in the open ocean get fuel in jerry cans, like in five to 10 gallon gas cans, bring it back and fill your car every time. Think about how exhausting that would be at yeah. no matter what age you were. And then by yourself. And then if it's raining and then if there's a storm and you get delayed. So it's, I mean, it's, it's pretty heavy what he has to do. Like yeah. he is the true survivor. Like <laughs> it's like, it's pretty it's amazing. It's one of those spots that like just talking to you about it, like I want to just go there to experience it because I feel like it's hard to like kind of fathom what he's doing. And like if you have that experience and you go to that place, you're probably just going to have a new appreciation for that. You know what I mean? And it's... and the people that do fish and dive and like go sail and stuff that get to go there, they've experienced that. Like it's probably mm -hmm. such an amazing place. There's There's places that I have been to that I'm like, Dude, if anything happened to this place, if this guy needed a new roof over his head, I want to do the same thing. Like, I want yeah. to put a GoFundMe together and see what kind of people I can get involved in. Like, it's just important. It's important to give back. It's important to support people that have those areas that are so, hit, they're just such hidden gems. We're very lucky to be able to have this, you know, medium right now with social media and what you and I are doing right now. And I really appreciate Salt Life, you know, giving us the opportunity to share this. Um, <clears throat> we've had we've had a couple other different groups. Um, I did a show with Meat Eater um, last year now, and after you know posting about you know this this as well, we were able to raise a bunch of money. So we're at like the final run right now, and I'm really hoping that you know the Salt Life community that you know loves you know, being a part of this world will, will help kind of preserve his and give us this last boost. Um, if you get a chance, it's GoFundMe and it's Flo's Kunk Shack Solar. And thank you so much for helping out. And Chester, thanks you as well. So where specifically is his spot? Like, how do you get there? Is It's obviously only by boat. Um, is, it, is it one of those destinations that's super hard to get to? Or can you put your coordinates on and it's hard to get to. Um, I mean, you can get there if you, if you've got a boat, uh, yeah. sailboaters and yachts have a pretty easy way of getting there. And then from Nassau, you can get there fairly easy as well. Um, and that's what most people do is a day trip from Nassau over there, um, to go to lunch. And you said that, um, uh, calling in beforehand a couple days before oh, yeah. let him know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You can find his contact on Facebook, I believe. Um, I don't think he has a website or anything. I'll give links to like the videos we've done of it um, for people to share and kind of live vicariously through it. it, it it's, it's hard to describe. It's even hard to like show videos of to really wrap your head around it. Um, but anybody who has been really remote and tried to survive, you know, like they'll be like, oh my God, this guy needs the help. And like, this is worth saving. So, I mean, that's, that's the bottom line. It's, it's just something that's worth saving. It's hard to explain. Is he going out and getting the conks himself? Yeah, most of them. That's and it so takes gnarly. a long time because like to clean a conk, you basically, you know, you got to dive or you get them with a conk hook, which you reach down from the, uh, from the boat, get them up, bring them up, get a whole pile of them, knock a hole in them, cut the, the, uh, the snail out, pull it out, and then cut all the outside off. Then you got to pound it 
and then you got to cut it up then you got to bread it like it's a lot Jeez. of work is this like um, the last place in the bahamas that's just solo by itself kind of just out there i want to say it's the only one i found like that one guy is living on an island and doing that and i mean dude i've been 80 something countries like it's the only place i've ever seen like this anywhere in the world so does he does he own that island then he does not i and i don't know if they have squatters rights or it's just kind of been passed down through the family is it big enough to build on it okay so that that's kind of a scary thought too i mean that's like one of those places that you're like dude he has this island by himself like you want to just preserve those spots like you can't you can't right. give that up we're not just gonna let that thing you know die off and let the building collapse like that's one of those spots that especially by you saying it like you've been all around the world fishing and diving and, and doing everything like there you obviously have a heart for this spot so mm -hmm. uh, to me that means a lot too and i want to i want to you know give back to that too so yeah um, thank that's you guys one of those, that's one of those things that i'm just like dude like that's crazy to me that mm -hmm. we're having to sit here and you know talk about this because it sucks like i want him to just be able to have that provided to him yeah and we can we can turn our our power on and off you know we can pay our electric bill it's easy we got it good we we get into that circumstance of just like you said like we can turn our power on and off right i'm on a computer right now plugged in with a light on like totally good you don't really think about it and then when the powder power goes out we freak out right but i was just in south africa recently and they turn the power off at like nine at night and they turn it back on at like four in the morning like they have power times that are on and off because they can't produce enough power and like water and like stuff like that and we're, we're so lucky here on the mainland that we can do that so like he he collects his water he's on rainwater and he's got a well which is kind of a brackish horrible water that <laughs> isn't the best thing but um yeah it's, it's a unique way of life man for anybody who hasn't spent any time on a, on a properly remote island like it, it should be a lifetime goal even if you know you go to a resort try to get out of the resort and like literally go into town and and see how people live it's it, we really take for granted that the way people live in the u.s is not the way more than half of the world lives um it's yeah, it's pretty incredible. Yeah, we've got it. We've got it made for sure. So how do you have any like social media posts or anything that people can repost and spread around the word? Yeah, yeah, I will. Um, I'll send it um, to you and we can put it on here. Um, but the easiest thing to do is, is to look up flows Kunk Shack solar on uh, on GoFundMe. And I've got links to videos on there that we've done um, some beautiful pictures of it. Um, and he has a Facebook page where people have put a bunch of photos and everything. And it's like, and people are just going to be blown away by, it's just a cool spot, man. Like I, I, I wish I could talk about some of the, the people that we we've, we've taken there. Like it's, it's pretty cool. The, the people that have taken an interest in the place and, you know, I'm glad that salt life, you know, is following has taken an interest as well. When's the last time you were out there? We went for spring break with the kids. So we went nice. a couple weeks ago. Yeah. This fun. Was there was there any progress in in regards to like getting stuff prepared and ready or you It's all on me, man. It's all yeah. on me. So <clears throat> it's so expensive to get stuff there. I'm waiting until I have money to buy everything and to yeah. do one shipment because the shipment is really expensive because you got to put it on a ship in the US and bring it over there, then put it on another boat to get it there. So to get it done in one foul swoop saves tens of thousands of dollars. Um and it, it helps a lot. So we're getting there. We're very, very close. Um, you know, we, like I said, I think we're 18,500 short. So the goal is like this amazing group of people listening right now is going to push us there. Yeah. What's, what is your plan for getting everything there? You were talking about a ship, like shipping it over, but do you have that all set out too? Everything's ready. Like I've got everything quoted out. Everything's ready to roll. We're just waiting for this last bit of money. And then, um, the stuff will get sent to Fort Lauderdale, get it, get sent on or get put on a ship there, taken to the Barry Islands. And then we got another boat that we're gonna carry it from there to Chester's. Um, the, the land is already cleared. Um, we still need some like digging equipment cause it's like rock that we have to dig into to put the bases. Cause this stuff will, you know, withstand like a cat five hurricane. Um, and you basically got to dig holes and put these rods in there and then concrete around it to put the frames for, um, or they call it the racks for the solar panels. And then we have to build another structure 
to keep the batteries in uh, protected. Same thing for a Cat 5 Hurricane. And <clears throat> the basic idea with the solar panels is you can run everything during the day and then it saves enough energy in the batteries that you can still run through the night. And he has two or three uh, refrigerator freezers and basically one AC unit that he uses in his house. And that's the main thing we're trying to power. So it doesn't seem like a lot, but for, for a remote place, it's a lot. <laughs> Sick, dude. Well, um, do you have any trips planned coming up or anything fun going on? I do. Um, we're getting into our summer, so we'll have a couple Bahama stuff. Central America is going off, so we've been down there shooting yellowfin tunas, and it's just such an epic time of year. This this time of year, like, literally everywhere in the world is good. Um, and then once it starts to get real hot, we'll start moving down to, like, um, South Pacific, Indian Ocean, some Africa, and then actually uh, have – couple cold water trips i've got an alaska and a greenland trip so those are gonna be pretty wild sick dude well um i appreciate you coming on here and talking to us about the whole you know thing going on at the bahamas and i think that's super important and it, it was fun to talk to you about it and everybody listening in we we got the gofundme Flo, flows conk shack solar right that's it Rad Cam. Well, thank you again. I appreciate it. All right, buddy. Thank you guys. And thank you for all the Salt Life crowd. You know, this is something that um, we love being a part of and uh, it's truly living the Salt Life out there for Chester. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks everybody for listening in. We'll catch you next time.